congregation. We're glad you're here this morning. We're glad to have you. Uh, we have two children's services, and uh, children's church and junior church that takes place. Uh, so Mr. Sharon and Brother Allen will have a four-year-old through uh, second, first grade, second grade through sixth. Uh, we'll go here with Miss Rachel today and enjoy your time of worship in those classes. We'll see who's going to learn more, you all or us. Okay. We're going to write the test, though, because we need to pay this Church, it's so good to see you. It's so good to have you this morning. What a, what a morning of worship that we have been given so far. Sunday school, good hour. And uh, we're in the book of James still. James chapter number 3. Uh, last week we covered uh, verses 1 through 12. Uh, we looked at, at, at false teaching and being aware that false teachers exist. Uh, we spent a, a heavy amount of last week talking about the tongue and uh, how the tongue is such a powerful instrument and how Satan uses the tongue so much against us and how we have to guard against it. That this little bitty tongue inside my mouth uh, it is so powerful that it truly can uh, start wildfires that could burn down uh, entire places. It is so strong that it can serve in the, the similarity of a rudder on a big ship, and it can guide my life and your life and others' lives left and right off of the straight uh, path. The tongue is it is so powerful that that the bit in the horse's mouth. He control where that strong, magnificent creature will go. Uh, this week we're going to uh, move on, and, and in the book of James, God is giving to us in, in third verses 13 through 18 uh, a wisdom, and He's highlighting the word wisdom. And wisdom can be a great thing, but we must recognize that while there is good wisdom, there is also bad wisdom. Now, while there are good things for us to know and good things for us to understand, there are some things that are not so good. And we must understand them as well. If you study the book of Proverbs at all, uh, Proverbs is a book of wisdom. It is a book that, that expels wisdom to us and, and encourages us to seek wisdom. The New Testament, Ephesians chapter number 5, uh, we are exhorted, we have been commanded to walk in wisdom. In, in James chapter 3, we learn that there are multiple facets of wisdom and some we need to follow and some we need to be aware of so that we stay away from them. In this lesson, we're going to look at, at what James describes, good wisdom, evil wisdom. Godly wisdom, worldly wisdom. And these two, even though the word wisdom is spelled the same, pronounced the same, and, and has the same meaning, uh, they can be contrasted. Earthly wisdom is not from above. Heavenly wisdom is from above. So let's break that down, but before we go any further, let's get to the Word of God. James chapter number 3, verse 13 through 18. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and strife in your heart, glory not, and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruit, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father God, we do thank you for the day. We do thank you again.
for allowing us to be here. I thank you, Lord, for the song service, for the, the testimonies, the, the prayer requests, the time of prayer. God, I thank you for the ability for us to give to you in an offering so that your work can be furthered and taken care of. But God, I pray for us now as we come to the breaking of this living bread, the breaking of your word. I pray that you'll allow it to go out. I pray that you'll let us to hear it. I pray that you'll let us to, to know that you spoke to us. God, that we will not just be hearers of your word, but we will be doers of your word. God, I pray for those working in nursery. I pray for those working in children's church, and junior church. Lord, let your word go forth. Let your message go forth. If there be anyone here today, Lord, who does not know you as their Savior, I pray that they hear the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I pray, God, that you will speak to that heart, that you will draw them to you, that they will not leave this place today without knowing for sure that they'll spend eternity with you in heaven. Thank you for your salvation. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for letting us be adopted into your great, perfect, heavenly family. Lord, we love you. Have your way with us for the remainder of the service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wisdom. May we all find wisdom. But may we know in our search for wisdom that there is good wisdom and there is bad wisdom. There is earthly wisdom, there is heavenly wisdom. Uh, we can use these particular verses and we outline the, the actual contrast that I talked about a few minutes ago. Earthly wisdom is not from above. And when we're talking about the context of above, being our creator in heaven, above all, above all things, looking down on us, that's what we're talking about, being not from above. And when we're focused on Christ, and we're focused on Jesus, and, and, and these things are coming down to us, we must realize anything here on our level, anything that's trying to come up to us, is earthly wisdom, and we need to be using caution. It is worldly. Worldly wisdom is always defined by the standards of man. Worldly wisdom is always defined by the standards of, of, of political realms. Worldly wisdom is always defined by governments and by, by those type of entities. That's not altogether or inherently bad. They're just not God. And God has given us the truth. And God has given us the precepts of His Word. God has given us a, a moral law that we should live by. Those things are from above. But the things that are, are, are of this earth, the things that come to us from the standards of the world, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 tells us is foolish. It's not only earthly, but it is sensual. Earthly wisdom is not from above, but it often touches the senses. It appeals to the senses. We've got to be careful when, when, when wisdom is, is becoming too emotional. When, when it drives a passion from us. Wisdom according to what feels right still won't make it right if it's not sent to us from God. Now, I'll be honest with you. I've enjoyed some emotions this morning. I've shed a tear or two this morning. I'm proud of what God's doing. And I'm glad God's moving. And, I, 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 and my heart's breaking with some of your hearts. My heart's also rejoicing with some of your hearts. And emotions is not inherently bad. Uh, but I go back and, and, and if, if it is driving a passion from us to others, we need to be careful. Because heavenly wisdom is going to drive the passion of God into us. And we're going to become more passionate about His work, and that's how it will go out. Earthly wisdom, not from above, it's earthly, it's sensual. And folks, the Bible says it, and it says it well, earthly wisdom has got demonic roots. We 
talk Wednesday night if you were here. The truth is, a lot of times the old traditional Baptists, we don't want to talk about demons. But it's real, folks. Demonic presence is real. We live on an earth that has been cursed from the time of sin. And we live on an earth that, that is, it, it's got one third of the heavens who rebelled against God and who had been given dominion here. And we deal with this stuff day in and day out. <coughs> Satan himself is a lie. His angels are full of wisdom. And he's roaming about, just like it tells us in the New Testament, seeking whom he may devour. Who does he want to devour? He wants to devour you. He wants to devour me. He wants to devour any child of God and any person serving God. He wants to devour the godly congregations that are trying to, to push his word forward and to stand on the truth. He wants to devour all things Christ. And he will use a lot of wisdom within his techniques. But heavenly wisdom is from above. Heavenly wisdom comes from where? Heavenly wisdom comes from God through prayer. Let's say that together. Heavenly wisdom comes from God through prayer. Now God uses a whole lot of different avenues to instill that. So we talk again. Earthly wisdom. It's worldly. It is set forth by the world's standard. It, it, it often is very sensual and it, it wraps up the emotions and it, it, it ties up the feelings. It's got a demonic base. But heavenly wisdom, good wisdom, comes from God through prayer. Well, where do you fit into this, Pastor? Where do you fit into this, Teacher? Where does, well, my message comes from God. And your message, if you're teaching, better come from God. And if you write a study book or if you write a commentary, and that message better come from God. Why? Because none of us are sufficient. None of us are good. No, not one. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. And if I'm doing my job from the pulpit, and Brother Jerry and Brother Buck's doing their job from the, from the podium as we see, we're just preaching and we're just singing God's message. And our teachers are teaching God's message. So when you begin to be stirred, or when you begin to have something from God's Word put before you, that message is not coming from man. It's not coming from woman. It's not coming from any theologian. It is coming to you from God in an ordained manner that He has set forth for you to receive it. Amen. How do you receive it? I'm going to tell you that you're going to receive it through prayer. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, but the truth is how many of you all prayed for me in the message that I have that I would be speaking so that you would be here to receive God's Word. Don't raise your hand. How many of you come in this morning and said, God, I'm here and I want you to fill my heart. How many of you woke up this morning and said, it's a blessed day to be alive and I want to go worship you, God. Will you just let me get there safely and even before I get there, begin to put your word in my heart. You see, that's where we need to be in our walk with Christ. That's where we need to be in our service. And, and we will hear from God when we are asking God to speak to us. So we contrasted their origin. Earthly is from earth. It is worldly. It's the world standard. Uh, earthly often it is man-led in emotions and in feeling. Earthly is, is coming from Satan and his followers. But heavenly is from above. It is from God to us in a way that only God can operate through prayer and through us seeking and asking for it. We can contrast it in the origin, but we also can contrast it in their overall nature. Earthly wisdom, verse 14, 15, and 16, we will see that it is full of bitter envy. Anywhere you see the word bitter, 
in the Bible, it's got a negative connotation. I, I tried to prove it wrong, and, and, and I thought I will find it because Jesus, when he's on the cross, the, the vinegar was bitter. Well, guess what? That means it don't taste good. It's still got a negative connotation. And, and our earthly wisdom will be full of bitter envy. Earthly wisdom will often cause us to possess self-seeking of uh, thoughts and self-seeking motives within our hearts. Hey, we've got a lot of churches that are wrapped up in this today. We've got a lot of pastors that are wrapped up in this today. They, they want to share wisdom and they want to, to share these truths and, and all they care about is the, the flashy ways that they can put outlines together and that they can uh, attract people to remember what they say. They just want to elevate themselves. Be careful, Christian. And be careful, church. There should be no elevation of man at all in the wisdom of God. It's His Word. It's His message. Earthly wisdom uh, will, will seek to extol the four P's. Power, position, privilege, and prestige. And any time you begin to see someone looking at any of these four P's, you need to wave a red flag right there. And I'll tell you, we need to go a, we need to go a step further. When, when you see a Christian, when you see a preacher, when you see a teacher, when you see a man, woman, boy, or child of God beginning to push their self into a place of power, a position, a privilege, or, or a prestige, you need to intervene because they may not understand the road they're going down. Satan's powerful. But there's only one who has power. And it's not me, it's not you, it's not Charles Stanley, Billy Graham, or any of those other great men of God that were alive. It's not Joel Osteen, and it's not any other man that you know on the face of this earth. It is the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All power, the Bible says, is given unto Him. That means all jurisdiction is given unto Him. And there's only one position that matters. And it depends on whether you're looking up or looking down. And I'm going to describe it as this. The only position that matters is the chief cornerstone or the head of the church, Jesus Christ. Nothing in between matters. It's just our reasonable service to be a part and to be a functioning portion of His heavenly body. Oh, we hear today white privilege. American privilege. Oh, uh, the society today wants to put a lot of other words with privilege and begin to push that. Well, let me tell you something, folks. It is a privilege to be a child of God. It is a privilege to have the hope and the promise of an eternal heaven. It is a privilege to be able to be adopted into His royal family. That's the only privilege we need. We don't need earthly privileges above other men, women, boys, or girls. We don't need any privileges as a church and community. We just need to serve the Master. That's all that matters. Prestige. Well, let's really look at some biblical prestige, right? Who was a man full of faith? There was a bunch of them. But there was one particular that was a man that was Absolutely like probably no other deacon that's ever lived. His name was Stephen. How much prestige did he have as those stones fell on his skull and as he died for the name of Jesus? Let's talk about the prestige of those disciples. Some of them were crucified. Some of them were beheaded. Some of them were beaten and cast into prison. Some of them worried about where their next meal would come from. That's how much prestige they had. Let's take it a step further. Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, lived on this earth. And how much prestige did He have? He rode a donkey in the town. 
And even though he, he created great miracles and he saved people and he set people free, he cast demons out of people, they would take him and falsely accuse him and put him on a false trial. They would drive a crown of thorns in his skull and he would begin to bleed his precious blood because it was the will of the Father. He would be tied to a post or however they done the, the whippings. He would be beaten with the cat of nine tails to where Psalms 22 says his bones would literally stare through his skin. They would lay him down and they would drive nails through his hands and nails through his feet. They would raise the cross and drop it into the hole and he would hang there for hours in agony. Just trying to breathe. And he would bleed until the point that his body would expel water because there was no more blood, I believe, that could be shed. He shed it all. Jesus paid it all. All to him, I hope. How much fresh the east of the Son of God have here? Why do we think we need prestige? Why do we think that we need to be elevated? We need to be humbly bowing at the feet of Jesus. <coughs> Earthly wisdom will make us feel like we need power, position, privilege, or prestige. And this is the way Satan operates, folks. And this is how Satan ruins churches, breaks down churches, tears churches apart. This is how Satan tears apart families ruins children is an absolute rebellion against the way of God. But we have earthly wisdom that we just highlighted. But praise God, we've got good wisdom and heavenly wisdom. Look at me, verse 17. It is pure, pure. Above all else, it is God's will. It is God's word. It is God's message. And it will not compromise the truth for nothing. Is the wisdom you're receiving today pure? Let me tell you something, folks. It will also be peaceable. It will be peaceable. There's something about the way God handles even when you live on this earth, when they falsely accused him, and when they tried him, how did Jesus handle it? He was so peaceful. He had, a, he had a trait that I'm trying to pick up. He would simply reply in the calmest of voices, all the education that we have. And he would share the truth. It's gentle. It's not harsh. You think about how Jesus spoke to the Samaritan woman. Remember the other one? And he said, where, where are your accusers? I'm not going to accuse. You see, Jesus could. Jesus would have been a right because he was perfect. But when that harlot, when that person at his feet who deserved nothing from him but to be stoned to death, Jesus in a gentle manner to share the truth that he said, woman, where are your Jesus? I told him, it is the law. Ye who are among you cast the first stone, and they all went. Oh, how gentle he was. When wisdom comes to you, and it is pure, and it doesn't defile the word of God, and it don't worry about man's standards, when it comes to you, and it is just peaceable, and you can handle it gently, You've got something to work with. And there'll be some people that, that are not going to like the Word of God. But it's a tie like that. The world don't like it. 
The world don't like our standards. The, the world's going to judge us and the world's going to make it clear. And, and today, as uh, we go further in society, uh, we that believe in, in, in the marriage of man and woman, we that believe in, in a lot of those things that the Bible teaches, we're, we're bigots. We're, we're being racially driven to separate people. That's not the truth. That's not the truth at all. That's the way the world will see it. But when God's got a part of it and when our heart is right, the message will be pure, the message will be peaceful, and the message will be able to be delivered gently by the messenger of God. Why? Because we just talked about it. It's not our message. It's His. We will be willing to yield. We will yield to the truth in our life. We will, we will yield in the liberties that we have. You've heard me say it. I'll say it again. I am a red, white, and blue-blooded American. You can define me as a patriot. I'm proud of it. I love this country. There's no country greater on the face of the earth in my mind that I can live in and raise my family in than the United States of America. But just because my Constitution or just because my country says I can do or cannot do certain things, that has no ill means to what God's Word is. Why? Because it sets precedence. It maintains its importance. And there's times that I, as a pastor, have to keep my mouth shut in this country because I have not been called as a Christian, as a God-fearing man, to speak on those matters because they are divisive. So we allow our liberties to be yielded to. But here's a bit, and we, we yield in our matter of opinion. Who is the most opinionated person we have? Boy, that would start a war, wouldn't it? I have a lot of opinions. There's a lot of people pointing this way and that way, and I don't think they're all pointing to Brother Paul. I think most of them point to <laughs> But the issue here is we all have opinions, right? And all opinions speak, except what God has set forth in His Word. The quicker we come to understand that, the better off we're going to be. Heavenly wisdom is pure, it is peaceful, it is gentle, it's willing to yield. Heavenly wisdom is full of mercy. Mercy to us is God not giving us what we do deserve. It is God intervening and, and not taking his belt off every time that I need it. Now, I'm not saying he won't. But there's time that he gives me mercy. In church, he does that so that we know and we understand that we should be merciful toward those that he has left us here to serve. I was asked by another pastor on some things that that, he knows, that pastor knows that I've been going through. And, and there's some things that, that I've been dealing with that just it, it's been a long-standing issue. A problem. I mean, multiple times. And, and he said, Aaron, I'm going to ask you something. Why do you keep dealing with that? And I said, because God keeps letting it come before me. It is our job to be merciful to others. It is our job to be merciful to, to those that God has called us to, to serve. It's not our job to compromise. It's not our job to, to waver our beliefs and, and join hands with them. But it is our job to be merciful toward them. It is our job to understand that, that, that He has simply called us to be messengers. And as long as we have an opportunity to share the truth, to stand on the truth, God will not allow His word to return void to Him. So be full of mercy. And heavenly wisdom is surely going to produce good fruits. If you're living a life this morning and you just are not seeing the good fruits, well, guess what? Your tree of life is barren. Okay? Well, that's not very uplifting. I'm sorry. It's the truth. 
If you're living for Christ today and you're taking in His wonderful heavenly wisdom and you're not seeing the fruit, maybe you need some more heavenly wisdom. Or maybe you've, you've misjudged the wisdom that you've been relying on and it has been earthly in nature and not heavenly. It's okay. I, I'm not saying that to beat anybody down. I'm saying that to encourage you to just find the heavenly wisdom. Find the wisdom that is from God, received through prayer, by His Word, and let it make a difference in your life. It is pure. It is peaceful. It is gentle. It is willing to yield. It is full of mercy. It produces good fruits. And it is given without hypocrisy. You know what the number one thing that I think Satan uses today against God's kingdom is I believe it is a Christian hypocrite. I believe it is a Christian who will willingly know what God has said but who will willingly, openly do different. Satan will use that and Satan will bring attention to that and Satan will put all eyes on that and after years and years and after generation after generation of the church allowing that to go to manifest before the world and not in check, we have churches today that don't know what the truth is. We have preachers today that won't stand on the truth. And we have families today that, that won't engage in the truth. And we have allowed God's Word to become so obscured by the power of Satan because we have hypocrites. I love God on Saturday for Sunday morning. Hey, you don't just stop there. I love God on Sunday morning and Sunday night. I love God on Wednesday night too. But you love everything else in this world the other 165 hours of the week. That's earthly wisdom, folks. That is wisdom that is wrapped up in emotions, wisdom that is wrapped up in the senses, that is wisdom that is wrapped up in the demonic powers of this world, and it is absolutely killing our impact for the kingdom of God. Will you please search your heart this morning? Will you please look for wisdom? But will you please take this message from the, the last book, the uh, last part of James chapter 3, and will you understand that we need heavenly wisdom today? Certainly when we compare the origins, the nature, and the fruit, heavenly wisdom is so much better than earthly. But those who have earthly wisdom like to boast of it. I'm not down on everybody, but I'll tell you that I'll tell you the title that I personally prefer. Are you ready for it? Some of you are new. This is the way I like to be called. Here. And I understand and I appreciate those that respectfully say pastor. But in my heart, reverence is reserved for the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I'm no doctor. I'm Aaron. I hope I never find myself boasting of a position, of power, of privilege, of prestige. And I hope you don't either. But heavenly wisdom will be shown by humility and meekness in living out what God has instilled in you so that others can see. What kind of wisdom do we want? And I'm done. Let me tell you folks, if you want earthly wisdom, you don't have to put forth any effort. It'll find you, it'll come to you, and it'll stick with you. Just do what the world tells you. 
If you want earthly wisdom, just do what your gut tells you all the time. Just do what feels right. And you'll find earthly wisdom. But if you want heavenly wisdom, I'm telling you, you've got to be diligent. You've got to be set. And you've got to seek this wisdom. And it will come from no other but God above. And when you get it, demonstrate it. Demonstrate it by the way you live. Demonstrate it by the way you speak. Demonstrate it by the places you go. Demonstrated by the demeanor that you carry. What kind of wisdom do you have in regard to the gospel of Christ? Well, let me tell you this: earthly wisdom, you can you can hang your boots on this, or hang your hat and bet your boots. If you want earthly wisdom, and you're wrapped up in earthly wisdom, I promise you. The earthly wisdom you have will make no response to the gospel of Jesus Christ. It will only respond to what is convenient and what seems pleasurable and profitable for you and you alone. So if you're here today, you're part of the church, you know Christ as your Savior, and you, you've got all this knowledge from all these years and you're not impacting the kingdom of God with the gospel of Christ, I'm telling you there's a good chance you've got earthly wisdom. If you're only here today because you're here at Lakewood because nobody makes you mad yet, and when somebody does make you mad, you want to run off to another church, that's earthly wisdom. If you're only here because this place will let you teach or let you have power or a position, you're wrapped up in earthly wisdom. Be careful. You're still welcome here. We still love you. But don't get wrapped up in earthly wisdom. Heavenly wisdom will receive the commands of God and will joyfully and obediently promote the gospel message of Jesus Christ. In heavenly wisdom, no matter how far down it puts you, it will raise him to the utmost degree. And it will magnify Him. And it will praise Him. And it will honor Him. And that's what we're striving for, church. Please, pray, seek, retain, and demonstrate good wisdom, heavenly wisdom, in every walk of our life. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father God, we thank you for today. We thank you for all that you've given us. Lord, I pray that you be with us as we come to our time of invitation. God, as, as we trust you, I pray that you just take this message, that you'll take your word, that you will place it upon our own. God, maybe some of us today have been convicted. Maybe you spoke directly to us and, and maybe we knew that our wisdom was earthly in nature and we were self-conceited and holding on to it. God, let us give that up today. God, I know as I prepared and I preached this message, Lord, you showed me some things that, that have, have truly been able to be identified in earthly wisdom and they were innocent in my heart. But God, let me give those up and let us give those up today and turn it to heavenly wisdom sent from you to us. God, may we not seek power, positions, prestige, or privilege. But God, may we truly receive what is peaceful and gentle and humility so that we can serve you the way you call us to serve. Lord, as we sing this song, I pray that you let anybody here do business between them and you. Allow us to use the altar as you lead us Know that there will be no one embarrassed, no one called out, but we would love to pray with anybody that would like us to pray with. But God, most importantly, for anybody here today that does not know you as their Savior, let us hear the gospel message of Jesus Christ.
Christ. How you love them and you died on the cross of Calvary. You shed your blood so that they can come to know you today. The Bible says, Lord, if we believe in our heart and confess to you, thou shalt be saved. And may that person, if they're here today, if they're listening on Facebook, be convicted from you and may they receive you today for eternity. We love you and we ask you to have your way in this time of invitation. Jesus